Welcome everyone. And thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Samara Ben Rubin, and I will be your moderator for this webinar entitled LTE Cellular Connectivity with Sony's Presence Microcontroller. Your presenters today will be Armagan Abrahimi, who is a partner solutions engineer at Sony, and Camila Souza, who is an embedded software developer at Sony. Armagon works within the different Sony divisions, bringing innovation to developers and businesses to build scalable solutions. She has over 20 years of experience in the high-tech development of solutions in hardware, ASIC, embedded applications, and systems programming, and has been with Spresen since its launch. Our second speaker, Camila, is an experienced embedded engineer with a master's degree in machine learning. With extensive experience working in the automotive industry with a focus on robotics and artificial intelligence projects, Camila now works with Sony and contributes to the Spresence team by creating demos, writing tutorials, and supporting the developer forum. Before we begin, I'd like to share a few housekeeping items. All webinar participants should be in listen-only mode. If you do have questions during this webinar, please type them in the questions section of your GoToWebinar control panel and we'll ensure that they're answered at the end of the webinar. In addition, a replay of this webinar will be available to you within the next few days. Now, I'd like to turn it over to our first speaker, Armagon. Thank you, Samara. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Um, LT is a new addition to Espresso's family, and I'm so excited to be talking about it today and uh, cellular connectivity and how you can connect it with Espresso's and use the new LTE board. Let's see what we have and on the agenda and dive into this presentation. Today, I will cover Espresso's microcontroller, just brief overview of what is Espresso's, and then we are going to introduce our new components, LTE, and also briefly, I'm gonna introduce you to our new HDR camera, so that's another new addition to Espresso's family, and then uh, we just uh, uh, cover some of the sample applications that you need to learn about to start with LTE, some of the resources that I'm gonna share with you because we have a challenge going on with Hackster. So I'm gonna show you some uh, resources if you wanna join that challenge. We have very exciting uh, prizes for that. I will talk about it more. And then at the end, some of the new uh, updates and news that is gonna come up uh, with Espresso's, it, it will be covered. So let's go and see what is Espresso's microcontroller. The significant uh, or highlights for Espresso's is Espresso's is extremely low power, Not extremely, is low power. So it's a good um, microcontroller if you wanna leave it somewhere that it doesn't have access to power. So those application, IoT application that you need, with low power Espresso's is a good and suitable uh, microcontroller. In addition, it has high resolution audio. High resolution, you can listen to a machine or you can listen to the birds or you can listen, listen to the bugs in the tree and those kind of application. At the same time, we have GPS integrated uh, in Espresso's and uh, the antenna also is on the, on the board. If you wanna look at some, of, some more details for Espresso's, um, I would uh, look at this table. So we have six ARM cores, M4, very like powerful uh, processor. We have 156 megahertz of clock. Here, the rest of this table, what you see, there are IOs, so digital IOs or analog uh, inputs that you can access, how you can access the audio. And I mentioned the GNSS or Global Navigation Satellite System. These are the uh, uh, spec for, for Espresso's that, for example, if you want to add sensors, if I want to access SPI, for example, how can I do it? What, were the, what are the pins and how I can access it? Or if you want to use the analog input, we have six channels. So this is just a spec and then others, uh, other, um, uh, other functionalities that you see for Espresso's is a camera interface. So if you look at this, this is the camera, it just slides in very easy. And we have a ex uh, external memory access for the SD card, and you can use the uh, I2S. This is briefly to tell you what is Espresso's. Now let's look at the components. As you see in this picture, I have separated this page to three sections. These are the components that so far we had. 
At the bottom of the page, you see two new components. These are the new one that I will uh, talk about. But what I like to spend a little bit more time is the main board. This main board is the brain of our uh, Express Sense uh, kit. If you see the extension board or if you see the camera board, they are just supporting this board and make prototyping faster or give you uh, access. For example, the extension board give you access to audio and uh, just to make it easy for development. And uh, so, but main board has two chips on it, as you see here, and each of these are in charge of different functionalities. For example, if you look at CXDD5, uh, CXD5602, uh, you see that this is covering multi-core processor, for example. Or if you look at CXD524, which is the other chip on the board, is doing microphone interface. So for you to just know what are the functionalities on each of these chips. And then these two new um, uh, addition to Espresso's family, the HDR camera, I will briefly introduce it to you. And then we spend more time on LTE extension board. So let's get to extension board, uh, uh, LTE extension board and see what do we have. Uh, our new addition to Espresso's family is, um, I have to go back, okay, is a uh, LTE board. And for LTE, LTE board, we are partnered with Truephone and Sorocom. And um, if you wanna get more information, please go to our website, Developer Sony, and then you will get a lot of uh, how to use the uh, uh, Truephone and Sorocom is gonna come soon. So mainly now our partner is Truephone. Uh, Express Sense uh, extension board, it has uh, some capabilities. First of all, is a, a LTE CAT-M and it support narrowband IoT. Uh, you can, um, the, modu the module on this uh, uh, extension board is Murata. Other stuff that you need to know is because we had the old extension board, right? So the new one that is this LTE, it also gives you access to audio. You can access to digital input and output. And also it has the uh, analog input terminal. And then it has the access to external uh, memory, the same as our uh, extension, the uh, original extension board. So if you look at this, this is the face of uh, um, Espresso's LTE board. This is where you can put the main board on top of it. And then this is the power. And on the back, you see this is SIM card. And here you can add your external memory access for the micro SD card. Uh, it, uh, it is supporting um, uh, some of the inputs and output, maybe not all of all that it was supported by the extension board, previous extension board, but it still is a good complement to our uh, expressions. If you want to start working with this, I suggest you to go with this. First thing first, you need to put the hardware together. You need to know what pins you can access. And uh, for that, I suggest you to go to our website. I just made it visual, then you can see. Then you go to our hardware section, and then you can see the hardware guide for LTE. Here, you find all kinds of information that you need. For example, what is the power, um, what, what happens when I power up the board and when Espresso's main board is uh, powering up? Or how can I access the UART? How can I access the I2C? This is a good place to start, so I just mentioned it here. And um, uh, we, leave, we leave extension board, just this, this introduction here. Let me introduce you to the camera. Then we go more uh, in the programming and development in the next section. So the new camera is the new HDR camera. The module that we are using for it is this image sensor, ISX019. And uh, so this one, this, uh, this new one is using a CMOS image sensor. Let's look at the spec and learn a little bit more about it. So we're really excited about this camera because, because of the light sensitivity that it has, it can cover a lot of good application that you wanna do at night or is light sensitive versus the previous camera that we had. Uh, so the resolution for this is um, 1280 by 960. And also you will see that the access to this is an eight bit parallel. We are covering the format for uh, YC, RGB, RAW, and JPEG. The control interface is the same as previous camera. So it's I2C. And um, 
Also, the other additional fa fu functions that you can get, of course, is the uh, HDR range that is 120 dB. It is interchangeable lens, low light capturing, close up function. If you want to see what is the field of view based on your application, again, this information is here. The other good thing about this camera is you can operate the you can operate this outdoor because you have this uh, operation condition. So the temperature can be minus 20 to 65 degrees centigrade or the humidity. So these are some of the factors that uh, this camera can um, resist and you can use it in different type of climates. Let's look at some of the uh, pictures because it's image. Let's look at some pictures, right? So here we have different type of uh, pictures. I have here, I have HDR. So this is the HDR on and off. All the top pictures are on and then the bottom one is uh, for the, the first three is off. So if you look at this, you don't, you see the sky here. So with the new feature, with the new um, uh, HDR camera, you can get a picture like this. This is the night vision. So this is at night and this is uh, when, is, uh, when is off. And then also we have a sudden change of light. If you exit from a tunnel, uh, you see this bright light, but with the new camera, you cover that. And also if you want to read some uh, small, uh, like if you have a box and you want to read something. So mac macro shoot is also covered with this camera. It has very good cap capabilities and we hope uh, good, uh, it can support you with the uh, projects that is uh, for vision and uh, and image. I covered the camera. Let's wrap up this section by saying that ExpressSense, as I mentioned, has power, powerful processor, is an edge device. You can do edge computing. What does that mean? It means you need to do less data transfer to cloud, then you save money, right? You do all of the computation at the edge. It's very power efficient. And then on the board, you have access to camera, you have high resolution audio and GPS, plus you can add all, all of your sensors on top of it. Is um, now with the LTE, you have the connectivity as well. So if you want to target any IoT application, the uh, ecosystem that we have so far around this person can be a good place to start because of this um, uh, so because of this um, uh, capabilities that this presence has. Uh, if you want to find out like uh, where to get Espressense, please go to our website, go to Buy Now. Our main distributor is Framos, which is hosting this uh, webinar. And uh, you, can see, uh, you can see the uh, availability and uh, where you can, uh, you can order your boards over there. We cover Espressense, um, just intro, let's get into it and let's learn about LTE. Here I'm covering three examples for you. The first one is LTE HTTP GET, SMS sample application, and then at the end is kind of like a full application to do digit recognition. For the first one, which is the LTE HTTP GET, what is this program? What does it do? Probably uh, what you do here is you're using the LTE communication function to access a URL, and then you basically look at the HTML of that URL. This is basically is is very is a very good example to test to see if LTE is working. That's why I put it here. What do you need for hardware is only the main board, and then you need, of course, the LTE board and the SIM card. So as you see here, this is the LTE board, this is the main board, and the SIM card. And then for the uh, uh, what we do, how we do it, so is that we do build and then we do operation check, and then I show you the output. This link, it gives you the access to, to this. We have a lot of tutorials and we have a lot of examples. So the link is provided here. And uh, so I will get into this. It's, it's more like if you have uh, work with Espressions, is the same. We always need to go to Express Sense SDK folder. That's how you just run all of your commands. We always suggest to do this source uh, tool because then it's gonna help you to um, use the tab, uh, uh, use the tab uh, uh, completion feature and so on. That's that's kind of like optional. But and then uh, we have um, in Express Sense SDK when you you probably are familiar with this. The examples, everything is under examples. Here is LTE HTTP GET. Then you need 
The next step is to configure that example. So you just run this command to configure it. And if you want to change anything in configuration, you run this command. Otherwise, when you are here, you are done. It means that I want to run LTA um, HTTP GET and you are done. But let's talk about this, uh, this command. And if I want to access and if I want to change <clears throat> something in my um, application, uh, application, this is this is how you get uh, to so when you run that command you see this page and then you go to application configuration these are the steps that i put here so you go to application then you go to espresso sdk of course you go to examples and then you have the http get uh, uh, example if you want to change your uh, sim card apn or if you want to change any configuration i put the example here for you then you see what you can change when you get to example, you can change the access point name. So now our provider is TruePhone. So you put uh, the information for, for True, TruePhone and uh, what type of IP you are accessing or what is the authentication uh, type. So all of this information, you can change it there. So you can, um, you can just uh, add that there. So that's the uh, possibility that you can use that config-m. And then after that, you need to make it because now everything is configured. Now I have to make it and generate the notex.spk. Again, this is something that we always do, but after make, you generate this uh, file and you need to flash your board with this file, which is you're running this command. And then uh, after you run this command, you need to uh, open the serial terminal and communicate with your LTE. So this, this part, you can use Minicom, a screen, or whatever that you are comfortable with. You connect to your Minicom, and when you see the nutshell uh, command line, you can run this command. This command is LTE HTTP get, the same name of the example. And then when you run this, if you don't put this URL here, by default, it goes to this website. It goes to this um, here. Yeah, this is an example uh, that we already put there as default. If you want to put your URL, make sure that you put HTTP or HTTPS. Now let's see if I run this command, don't have the URL, what am I going to get in the output? This is a screenshot of what I did and I wanted to show you. This is the base bit, this is the example. So it just says example domain, right? And as you see here, you see that this command is running and then you see the modem is uh, restarting and all of this process is happening and is active so everything is nice and moving forward and then you see that we have the example this is the uh, this is the html file of this website so this is a this is the example so this is what you expect this uh, after you run this you can check the result and make sure everything is in place so by the end of this example, you can check your uh, LTE functionality. Now let's go to another example, which is the sample, uh, sample application for SMS. For SMS is, um, I would like to, that, the reason that I put this example here is because I would like you to get familiar with uh, communicating with uh, LTE board using the sys control commands and stuff so this is uh, again uh, talking about uh, sms is short message you are sending a message from your lte board or you are receiving a message what i need here again same thing i need the espresso's main board is extension board and sim card make sure your sim card supporting sms function and the steps for build, uh, the steps are the same so you are building up and then checking the operation and then showing the output uh, to show the commands, we go to Espresso's SDK and also we need to configure this uh, example. The example that we have here, it's called SMS send or SMS receive. When you run this command, basically you are uh, telling your um, uh, Espresso's, okay, I'm going to run these two uh, these, uh, examples. Then you make it. And then, of course, uh, you flash the board, same as before. So these are very standard step-by-step. -step. If you run an example, then you need to access to serial terminal. After you access to serial terminal, this is the fun part. So here you have LTE sys uh, control, and you have a bunch of options. It means that here you can add your APN, you can add the protocol, and all of the, you have so many options that you can communicate with LTE and manually set 
to say which uh, SIM card you are uh, connecting with. And um, all the information for uh, these options is already in our document. So you can play with those options and uh, set it up. And then after that, you need to enable the uh, um, network interface. After you see this OK, means OK, I'm all set. And then you run your SMS command. It can be sent or received. Usually for this LTE uh, sys uh, control, you can, after you do this, usually I do a LTE sys control stat to make sure everything is connected. I'm, uh, I see my the information for APN and connection is already there and everything is set correctly. So if um, when you run that, so now uh, uh, for the SMS, now let us go back. So for the SMS receive, you just uh, do this and uh, you put the and at the, at the end, then it's gonna run in the background. But for the SMS send means you have to send it to a phone number, then you have a text message, and then you have a, a status report to tell you if the person on the other side got this or not. For that, you have the option to, um, so you have the option to um, add, uh, this enable a stat, a status is, t is telling you if uh, I have a table here. So if you have received or uh, if, uh, if you don't want to receive SMS, uh, receive confirmation notification. Usually I put it there, especially at the beginning when I work with LTE to make sure everything is going through. And then destination number, of course, and your text, make sure you put code around the text. Um, let's look at the table here. So here you see all of the um, different, uh, you see the different uh, sections that you see if after you uh, run the command. So you have this table to show you what does it mean when it says send time, uh, send time or others. But let me, before that, let me show you this part. This is an example. So I, I say SMS receive, and then I have and at the end. And then here you see what happens next, and then you uh, you will see this output on your um, uh, ser serial terminal. So the set time, uh, message type, all of this thing, it was mentioned in the previous table here. What does it mean? So then you can debug and see if the message went through or if there is anything wrong. This is the confirmation. And then for the SMS send, as you see here, so I have SMS, my number, and then this is the text that I'm sending. And one is means I, I want to see the confirmation. So here, this is the output that you see after you run the SMS send. So uh, this one is, um, by now then, you know, the SMS uh, example is, is um, how to communicate with uh, LTE to do set up and send messages. I would like to add this um, uh, slide here too, because we are using the LTE and there are uh, cases that we may need to update the firmware. I would like you to know that for now, if you go to uh, application, remember I told you about config. If you go to application configuration and then uh, get to example, one of the examples that we have is LTE uh, firmware update. So currently this is the support that is available if you wanna update your firmware, but we are releasing a new document that uh, not only here, but also on your PC, you can go through a step-by-step -step instructions and uh, update your uh, firmware. So this is, something, uh, this is something that is good to know because you may use a different SIM card or maybe something comes up. Meanwhile, if you are uh, having um, any question, make sure you go to our forum, LTE is a new uh, board out there and we would like to hear from you. So just send us your question and if there is anything that we need to add to our firmware, we will and we keep you posted about this. So we make announcement about when the when this is it's supposed to come out sometimes in June. So this the next support for a firmware update. Last uh, last thing I want to mention here is I talked just about uh, two sample programs uh, for you. And, um, but I would like you to know that we have more that you can use. And this is the list that is available, TL, TLS, MQTT, um, and then uh, AWS. And all of these uh, examples, as I showed you in the previous uh, examples, everything is a step-by-step -step and you can use them and you can uh, get the information from these 
uh, website. Uh, this is the link that you can go to. Last example. Last example is now let's put everything together, right? So we have digit recognition in this section. Uh, this is what does it what does it do? Is a is a digit recognition number recognition is very popular in you know IoT applications. You have a meter. You have you need to uh, read some numbers in a factory, for example. So this is kind of a useful example to use uh, LTE. And uh, the requirement or what I'm using here is Espressence mainboard. I need the Espressence camera. This is the old camera that we have for this application. This is fine. And then we use X, uh, LTE extension board, SIM card. There is a LCD display to show the number. And then we have a card here that you have the number here. What we are using for this is, as I told you, we have a lot of examples. So we are using AWS IoT sample application. I don't go to details, but I just want to show you, uh, tell you what is happening here. What is happening? You insert the card here, Espresso's camera, look at this card and take an image. That image goes to Espresso's neural network, process that and tells you what number is that. Then it communicates with AWS and it shows it here. Yes, so you see that we have a new card. The new number is 18054. Espressence is detecting that number and show, it, show that on the, uh, um, on the screen. This is just a short example. This is just a small example to tell you, to show you the LTE, to show the LTE capability image uh, sensor that you see here. This is a very neat example. I really like it. Thank you, Camilla is contributing to this and she made this for us. Okay, so now um, let's look at the, some of the resources that I would like to share something with you here because I know there is a challenge going, uh, challenges going on with Hackster. We gave some free hardwares and now uh, with Framos, we are supporting again this challenge, offering some discounts. The prices are so good. So if you want to start with it, just these are some of the resources. If you if you want to listen to a webinar, even if you want to request the site, let us know. But if you go to our website and look at the webinar section, you will see everything from uh, the, the past webinars that we had. The way that we organize this is okay. This is the this is the introduction. Now, if you are an Arduino person, you want to use Arduino IDE, use this one. If you like to use CircuitPython, <coughs> use this, this uh, webinar. Also, Notex is another topic that we cover, Espressence and TensorFlow, and also Espressence and AI, which is using our own neural network from uh, Neural Network Council from Sony. These are some good resources if you want to start with. And then as far as tools and AI, we are, we are partnered with Edge Impulse and they make um, actually development for, for ML so easy on our uh, microcontroller. You can collect the data, you can model, you can create your model all the way to deploying, on, deploying that on our Espressence board. It's very simple, make it easy. Some of the examples that we have is in like five minutes, seven minutes, you can build an audio application or motion detection. And uh, they are very active with webinars and uh, supporting uh, Espressen. So please go and check it out if you want to use something um, very uh, easy and powerful. So this is, if you go to their website, Edging Pulse, under doc, look for Sony Espressens and uh, you can learn all about it. It's, it's, very, it's a very powerful tool and it makes ML very easy. So, and then uh, we got to this point now. So I have the news and updates, what's happening with us, a lot. I told you about this person's development, uh, developer challenge. They are very good prizes. We have PS5s, we have Sony products, like speakers and stuff. So if you're interested, check it out. And we support you. We have uh, good webinars, we have good um, resources, and also we are offering discounts for hardware. And so if you want to be part of this challenge, go for it. Um, next thing is the HDR camera. We briefly introduce it to you. HDR camera is going to come 
uh, actually, is it out there? It, 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 it's it's going to come to uh, be available on uh, Inframos sometimes in June, so you're the first one to hear about it. Keep an eye if you want to get this uh, amazing camera. We are partnering with Soracom. We are going to make it make the uh, website and access to documents and everything um, very soon. So it's going to be again in June. So June is, is a busy month for us. And then uh, we have our second article about the presence and space. So this one is about two persons communicating together and taking pictures uh, deep down, deep deep in the sky. So space, just just go for it and just uh, check out our article. Again, if you go to to, to uh, our blogs, you can uh, read about it uh, there. And uh, I told you all about the, the great things about Edging Post. Now they have a new feature, which is fantastic, is faster object, moving object, which is uh, supported by Espressense. We did a webinar uh, also with uh, with Edge Impulse to support Hackster uh, developer, which was last week. Everything is available on Hackster if you want to see. But this is all. If you want to hear more and connect with us, please uh, sign up for our newsletter, and then you can, um, uh, you know, ask and get the news. Uh, be the first one to hear about all these things. This is my last uh, uh, slide. Thank you so much for joining me. I uh, these are some pointers, like to to summarize. Where is our website? What is our Twitter? I emphasize on forum. As send your questions there, we help you out. And where you can find, uh, when you can buy Espressense, please go to uh, our web shop. And uh, Edging Post is great. We work with them. So I think I'm ready for the question now. I hope I'm doing well with the time. Thank you, Armagon, uh, for such an informative presentation. And thank you to everyone who has stayed with us throughout this entire presentation. Uh, there's lots of questions coming from the audience, but if you haven't submitted your question yet, please feel free to do so by typing them into the question section of your GoToWebinar control panel. We'll try to get to as many questions as possible now. If we, don't, if we do not get to your question, we'll definitely follow up with you via email and ensure that you have all the answers that you need. So Armagon and Camila, the first question is, how can I know if the place where I'll install my application has coverage area for LTE? Hi guys. <laughs> Um, I think I can get this one. Um, so it, it also depends on the carrier that you're using. Uh, but with TruePhone, for example, you can find this information in their website about which countries they have coverage for LTE. I'm going to be sending on the chat a link that you can use to check this information. Uh, but of course, if you're using another carrier, then uh, they should probably have this information too in their website. Perfect, thank you for that, Camila. Uh, a question from the audience. Is, is there a discount coupon available for the Spressence kit? Yes, there is a 10% discount available. I is, Can someone share that link for me? Um, so Framos actually is supporting us for the Hackster event and offering a discount. Yes, I, I I don't have it. So can yes, we, we offer that. If you go to Framos website by now, there is an offer for the kit. So you can use that. Is do you see the link like can uh, Camilla or someone share that link for us? I can look for, for the link while you get maybe the next question. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Uh, next question, compared to the regular extension board, what features am I missing on the LTE extension board? Camila, do you wanna take that? Yes, of course. Um, so the number of systems is reduced uh, on the LTE extension board when compared to the regular extension board. Uh, for example, the number of uh, 
analog and digital microphones can vary. For example, in, in the regular extension board, we support up to four analog or eight digital microphones. Uh, but with the LTE, we support only up to two analog or four digital microphones, right? Uh, the number of available pins, you know, like digital and analog pins is also different. And you have all of this information on the developer uh, website uh, for, for Sony. Uh, in the introduction session, you have a session for the extension board and for the LTE extension board. And you have all of the, descript all of the description there. Uh, we can also share those links uh, in the chat. Perfect, thank you. And Camille, sorry, Samara, for the discount, I, I think we can include it in the email that we send out after this, if we don't have it now, or we can do that also. Excellent, thank you. Uh, a question from the audience. Uh, is the HDR camera board for sale outside of Japan? Um, it's coming to Framos soon, of course. So uh, I think we are almost ready. Sometimes in June, it will be available. But the documentation is already out. And uh, so the, the page for where to buy is going to go up soon in, in June. Uh, check out Framos for that. Yeah, you see this web shop here. So just go to to our uh, buy now and keep an eye. I think it's going to be in. We make the announcement when it's available, but it's going to be June very soon. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Samara. Do you know if the links that I'm sending are reaching the audience? Um, they should can, be in the chat. chat. Yeah, if uh, if the audience looks in the chat, there should be some links there that uh, that they can peruse for sure. Okay. I see that Darren is providing the link for discount in the chat. Thank you, Darren. Okay, so we have another question. Um, is HTTP POST also working? I'm already using the Altair 1250 based module. So this is what I talked about. We have the, the firmware. If you have a specific question, add this to our forum. But we have noticed that there are some cases that it may not work. And uh, we are going to release the new firmware soon. Maybe if uh, just add this question to our forum and we will address it for you with a specific a specific uh, board or what you're using. Or uh, Camilla, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, uh, it, it was good to for you to point them to our forum because uh, uh, you know there we can give more detailed questions and and see the questions in more. Uh, more specifically. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, whenever you guys want to send any questions through a forum, that, that's always welcome. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, next question. Can I power my application through both the extension board and the main board, or is there a difference? I can take this question. So both our LTE board, see, look at this, the LTE board in this picture and main board, both of them, they have this uh, power, you can power it up uh, via both of them is okay. But if you wanna flash the board, make sure you are connected to the main board. So at the beginning, when you flash the board, probably connect to main board and add, then after you're done with that, it doesn't matter if you have it on main board or extension board. Perfect, thank you. Uh, another question, is there a benefit using CircuitPython instead of MicroPython? We don't support, we, we support CircuitPython, uh, not uh, MicroPython. And even for Py, uh, CircuitPython, it's not fully supported. So what I, I, I really like Python myself is, but if you wanted to get full support, go with Notex. Camilla, do you want to add anything? Uh, no, that's exactly it. Okay. 
Thank you. So is the CircuitPython API for LTE already available or only C++? Oh, yeah, it's, it's only C++. Okay, perfect. Um, another question, how long will this product be supported by Sony? So as you see, we have a new addition for our extension board, right? The LTE is coming out, the new HDR camera is coming out. As far as longevity uh, is, is, still, is still around, if you have a specific timeline or if you want to go even with the chips or go high volume, contact us and send us an inquiry. So here, when you see this link here, contact us, send us like, what is your project? What do you plan to build? And what is your timeline? We work it out with you. Perfect. Another question, a lot, lots coming in right now. How do I add custom sensors to gather data from Sony's presence? From Sony's presence? Camila, do you want to take that? Uh, yes, so you can add other sensors to Spresence. Uh, I'm going to share a link uh, here in, 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 in our chat where you can see the pinout for the board and what kind of connections we have available. So that might be interesting. Perfect. Uh, while I have while I have the the microphone, um, just something that uh, another link that I would like to share is for our YouTube channel, uh, Sony Dev World. Uh, we have been doing some uh, more videos, and we have other videos planned, and we plan to go through tutorials and how to get started and uh, all those fun video all those fun videos. Uh, so I'm just sharing the the link, the YouTube link with you guys. Perfect. Great. Thanks, Camila. Um, the next question, did you make a benchmark compared to PyCom modules? If yes, um, what are some good points for the Sony Spresence product? Um, I think we have, we have, we did a comparison with, uh, we did a comparison, but what I want to, I would like to say, first of all, it depends on your application. What are you trying to achieve? So of course, if you have access to power, if you use a mini computer, uh, this was regarding Pi, right? Did you, what was the question again? Sorry. It was uh, a benchmark compared to PyCom modules. Oh, PyCom. I thought, no, so Camila, yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think we have a, we haven't done a benchmark for that. Uh, that's good. Uh, I would like to, I'm going to write this down. And if we, have, we ever do, we're going to release maybe a, a post, uh, a blog post or something. Uh, but that's really good. I'm going to take a note on that. Uh, but right now we don't really have a benchmark to, to compare with. Perfect. Thank you. Another question. They're coming quickly. Uh, can I power Spresence with a battery? Yes, yes, you, you can. can. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we actually have an example uh, on our website that uh, shows you how to run Spresence, uh, and it says how to run Spresence with a battery for six months. I think that's the name for more than six months. Uh, so this is good. I can also share uh, the link here. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely use a battery. And also, uh, if you go to the frequently asked question session on our developer page, uh, there are specifications about like what kinds of batteries to buy and, and things like that. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, the next question is something maybe we can follow up uh, with the audience after. Can you share the source and the circuit of that number recognition example? And I assume that's uh, a question related to the presentation. So again, yes. the question is the source and the circuit of the number recognition example. Okay, I think I can take this one. Uh, so right now we cannot share the source code uh, because it's still being uh, perfected. Uh, and we eventually uh, want to share that, uh, but right now we still can't. Uh, but one good starting point is actually our example, that be because this 
this demo the, that we did is highly based on an example that's already out there, right? It's the AWS IoT example, uh, and that code is, is shared and it's open. Uh, so what we did is, is uh, highly based on that, so you, you can get that started. Uh, but yeah, eventually when we, we do are able to, to share our code, uh, we'll definitely uh, put it out there on GitHub along with, of course, we have those cards and those cards, they, they follow a standard. So when we do share that, we'll also share uh, on like how to, how to do the cards and all that sort of thing. Uh, but it's good that it's, uh, this has been requested because then we can, um, we know there is interest and we can definitely get it out there. Perfect. Uh, we're coming near the end, but we do have a couple more final questions. Uh, the next one is, what LTE frequencies do the module support? Um, where does it work so it's not only SIM dependent? So it, it works with LTE CAT M1. Um, and the, the next part of the question, can you repeat, Samara? Yes. So the question is, where mm -hmm. do the LTE frequencies that the modules, what are the LTE frequencies that the modules support? Mm -hmm. What was the uh, second part? The, this person is wondering where it can work, that it's not only SIM dependent. Uh, so, so where it can work um, with the SIM card uh, I shared before, but where it's not SIM dependent, I think I may have to to follow up with that one. So we're going to take a note on that. Actually, I would advise to use our Spressence forum uh, because then we can follow up with further details. Perfect. Thanks, Camila. Uh, another question, is the Edge Impulse tool available for free or is it at a cost? It's free. It's good. It's free and developers can use it. If you want to purchase the enterprise, that's another level, but it's free and open. You can use it. Developers can access it and use it. Perfect. That's great. Uh, just closing out the Q&A now, are there any live events coming up where one can see applications based on Spressence? Yes, yes, yes. So we are going to join uh, Framos Embedded World uh, event that is in, you know better than me, Samara. So maybe this is your question. You go ahead, Armagan. It's, it's, so it's happening. I don't know the date, but this is, a, this is an event that is happening in Europe. And we plan to show uh, some applications. Uh, Camilla, is, do you know is it like uh, kind of the end of June, right? Yes, end of June, uh, I think the 20th. I can yes. find out uh, really quickly the name, the exact name. Yes. Yeah, so it, uh, yes. it starts June 21st and goes to June uh, 23rd in Nuremberg, Germany. Excellent. Perfect. That's what I was looking for, yeah. Yeah, please join us for that and look at the application, applications that we have some exciting applications for that event. Perfect. So that's all the time and the questions that we have for today. So thank you so much to Armagan and Camila for answering all those questions. That was a rapid fire round of questions. Thank you to the audience uh, for all those awesome questions. Those were great. Uh, I just want to take uh, a moment to reiterate that we will be sending you the on-demand version of this webinar within the next day or so. Uh, in addition, you'll be able to request the full presentation in PDF format. Uh, so be sure to keep an eye out for that email. Uh, now we're at the end of our time together for today. But once again, on behalf of the presenters and on behalf of Framos, we would like to thank you for participating in the webinar today. Please be sure to follow Sony's presence and Framos on social media, including LinkedIn and Twitter, for more company information, product launches, and event updates. Thank you so much again. Have a wonderful rest of your day. See you at the next webinar and take good care. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.